This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. Most of the valley is receiving adequate rain, but now things are heating up. How does this affect the management of Sarkaspa leaf spot and sugar beet? We're talking with Ashok Chanda, Extension Sugar Beet Pathologist with the University of Minnesota and Northwest Research and Outreach Center in Crookston, Minnesota. Ashok, are you seeing much development of Sarkaspa leaf spot in sugar beet fields? So we planted beets a little bit earlier this year, and uh, you know we started season with uh, kind of on the cooler side, but finally we are having the heat units, and we caught up with the growing degree days as well. So most of the sugar beets are actually have closed the rows or just about to close rows. So compared to previous seasons, uh, we are a little bit slow in terms of disease development. Now we are seeing a few spots uh, in the fields that are already closed rows. And then, you know, we always see this Sarkaspa leaf spot first in the south, and then gradually we see more in the northern part of the valley. If you're following Dr. Wyatt's lab results from USDA RS in Fargo, we know that there are more and more samples are positive for Sarkaspa DNA in the leaf tissues. What's the best way to manage Sarkaspa leaf spot? So really, you know, when it comes down to use of a, you know, strong variety with the genetic resistance to Sarkaspa, we call this CR plus varieties. I know at least half of the growers are interested in growing these varieties and then others are still depending on the traditional varieties with a little bit more susceptibility to Sarcospora. As long as you keep on top of your fungicide applications, you know, you can do a pretty good job of having a very good crop. Number two, you know, crop rotation is also very good, you know, as long as you keep three to four year rotation with the beets and then try to have these beets a little bit away from the last year sugar beet fields. That way you're not moving that inoculum from the previous seasons, you know, into the field right away. But uh, depending on fungicides on top of genetic resistance is very important for managing Sarcospora leaf spot. What are some things to consider when it comes to fungicide applications? So when we're talking about fungicide applications, right, number one, like the timing of the applications. Now the fields, the closed rows, I think, you know, yesterday was the day to apply the first application. And for the fields that are just closing rows, you know, this is the best time to get your first application for a Sarcospora leaf spot, right? So follow the recommendations from the co-ops. You know, typically you start with a DMI fungicide and also a broad spectrum fungicide such as EBDC, which is, you know, Mancozep. Then you can come back with a tin and a topsin in the second application. You know, if you're only relying on a EBDC like a Mancozep for the first application, and if you have a couple of rain events, you know, now you have to really shorten the interval for your next application. Number two, spray coverage, you know, try to have at least you know, 17 to 20 gallons per acre because we have really like huge cannabis right now. So make sure that everything is covered properly with the fungicide. Number three, like you no know, different class of chemistries, you know, you cannot use the same class of chemistry again and again. So just make sure you rotate the chemistries. Are you seeing signs of root rot diseases? So Bruce, yeah, I think again, in terms of root rots, there are some reports of physerium that's showing up in the, you know, Moorhead factor districts. You know, it's bound to happen, especially if you have a field with physerium history. But if you don't know what's the rating for the variety that you planted in the particular field, typically if you see half leaf yellowing, you know, that's most of the time it's physerium, but to make sure that next time you plant beets, select a tolerant variety. In terms of rhizoctonia root rot, you know, with the heat that we have right now, you know, some of the fields with the higher rhizoctonia, they may show some root rot. If you're in doubt, always bring the samples to our uh, Northwest Research and Outreach Center, Sugar Beet Pathology Lab. We can help with diagnosis. Not only the root diseases, but you can also suspect it, you know, the leaf spots. We can help you identify what it is. Ashok, do you have any closing comments? We have a very good potential for crop this year. In Ostracospora leaf spot, once it established in the canopy, it's just a matter of time. So just you know, try to stick with the spray programs, especially even if you have CR plus varieties. You know, some of the first applications are very important. Then it gives you a little bit of freedom when you go to the spray three and then four. You can have like at least you know three weeks in you know, a well between those sprays. But if it is a traditional variety, you have to be on top of the program. Thanks, Ashok. Our guest has been Ashok Chanda, Extension Sugar Beet Pathologist with the University of Minnesota and Northwest Research and Outreach Center in Crookston, Minnesota. This is the Sugar Beet Report, 
bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.